Hey there, guys. Welcome to Confessions of the Idiots. Everybody wants to confess, but not everyone wants to hear them. Today, I'm lucky enough to be joined by a goddamn queen, one of my favourite people in the world, and one of the funniest people I know, the great Michelle Brazier. Welcome back. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you for coming on this podcast in isolation, Michelle. And I'm also lucky enough to be joined for the very first time by someone I'm a huge, huge fan of, and I know everybody else is in the goddamn world, because if you're not, just become one, guys, right now, because it is the legend that is Mark Humphreys. Welcome, Mark Humphreys. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's, oh that's, my that's so lovely. I mean, <laughs> but, I mean, it was only because I was complimenting your documentary earlier, I yes. think. That, uh, but, uh, that's, I always that's, ask for compliments funny. first and then <laughs> someone else. Then I give one. Yeah, I, I, like to, I like to say something nice and then say, now, what would you like to tell me about Mark? <laughs> but um, uh, yes, now I have a terrible feeling that I might have spoken over your introduction. So uh, just making a n note of that at the moment uh, that we may need to come back to that. But other than that, uh, great to I be love here. doing the introduction. I love it. I'll do it. I'll, I'll do it like five times throughout the podcast. Do you want me to do it? Could you do it, Michelle? That'd be great. Could yeah. you do it? Get it clean. Do it. Welcome back to Confessions of the Idiots. Hey, everyone wants to confess, but not everyone wants to read your confessions. You very fucking close. morons. Very close. Very close. That's the up late version. <laughs> yeah, I get, this is where I get angry, Mark. Just so you know, I'm okay. no, I'm the Michelle you're about to hang out with is not me. We haven't yeah. actually worked together, Mark, before. So I just want you to know I'm actually quite nice. But this <laughs> podcast is my um is my outlet. Yeah, this is my yeah. off brand time. <laughs> my off brand time. I, I like the clarification that we haven't worked before because I, I I love those occasional moments where someone says to you just oh. I, so great to meet you and like yes yes it was it was it was great to meet me uh, uh a few months ago but uh okay sure we sure. haven't have we, we no we've not no michelle no you're fine you're okay fine. good because i do do that and i know that we run in the same circle so oh, yeah. I, we've worked with a lot of the same people we'd have this if work was sex we'd have the same strain of stis oh it's wow. a beautiful thing to say but we haven't banged we haven't. Okay. Yes. <laughs> or in terms of banging. this is Michelle networking right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is how I network. This is how I meet people. Yeah. I just hang out at have the foyer banked? at ABC. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Have we yeah. banked it's, or excuse me, miss? <laughs> Anytime someone adds you on LinkedIn, but we've basically exchanged STIs now. Um, yeah. That's exactly how it works. Now, Mark, this is your first time on the podcast. Did you did you go to confession when you were growing up? No, I have no uh, religious scruples. I have no nothing like that. So no, I don't think I've ever been into. I think I always liked the idea of it, but I've never had to do it myself. Uh, I, I'm sure you've covered this many, many times. But where, where these confessions that you're finding, mm. is there one website you're 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 accessing them from, or, uh, or are you all... eavesdropping in actual confession booths? Yeah, I'm go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I follow people around until I get one. Sometimes it right, takes Sam's a while. A, Sam's a priest. Oh, yeah, that's something yeah. again that right. <laughs> we'll cover that later. People don't know. Um, <laughs> people don't know, but it's, <laughs> but um, but it is it is uh, something that I that I really troll the internet for nonstop, and I go through Reddit. Um, there's another one called Simply Confess. <laughs> a lot of different websites, and basically they get updated mostly every half hour. So Gosh. I do have Google alerts on my phone, and I was like, oh. the other day, it is the most embarrassing thing when I'm with someone, and I had sex with my dad pops up, and you're like, oh, I probably won't use that one, but you know, but it's just a Google alert on my phone. And do you ever feel like you need to to give back? You know, like you you, you see those <laughs> confess like, shop... myself. Well, yeah, like exactly. Like, there's a shop where it's like you know, leave a can of soup if you can, or take one if you need one. Yeah. Like you've taken so many confessions. Have you given back at all, Sam? I haven't. I haven't given back to the idiots just yet that confess <laughs> online. But one day I will, Mark. One day I'm going to write to them and I'm going to tell them how much I love them and how much they've really helped me out in terms yeah. of podcasting. Well, I think the conf confession will be, I've been using you fuckers uh, yeah. for years and, <laughs> uh, and exposing your uh, you know, concerns to a wide audience. But so it is, a, it is a very interesting thing, though, the, the world of confessions and getting stuff out there. Michelle, because you're, are you someone that you feel like you're really, you're, I, I think you're a very open and honest person. But is there any, any time that you actually want to confess something anonymously, if you ever wanted to do that? I don't think so. No, I don't. Yeah. I'd, my, uh, I, was, I was raised Catholic, so I kind of have that um, instinct. But I also. That guilt. Oh, 
Yeah, yeah, a little bit of guilt. Um, but I also like I just didn't I've realized that I've put some reverb on my voice. So I'm recording this. Um, so, it's the voice of God coming um, in. Who me? I don't have any secret. I oh, um lovely. I don't Beautiful. know how to get rid of this. Uh you're just gonna have to cop it. Um but <laughs> but no, I I understand the concept of confession, but no, I just I just vomit things from my mouth. If I do something bad, I'll have to tell people because other, otherwise I feel quite yeah. Uh, well, you tell me because I'm a priest, basically. I'm pretty I'll tell, much... Yeah, that's the thing. I've got you, so I don't have yeah. to tell the internet. I don't feel like I need an anonymous confession. I, Mark, I think I've told this story on the pod before, but when I was a kid, I went to confession once because I went to public school, but I was uh, Catholic. And I, so I went to confession, but I didn't really know what it was. And I was asked by the priest, what might have you done wrong? And I thought, like, his, his choice of words was, what might you have done wrong? <laughs> so I listed many sins <laughs> all the Plethora. sins i could think of <laughs> and that was my only experience <laughs> i was like uh killing um... <laughs> yeah, like adultery uh, yeah. All of them. yeah i'm like 12. <laughs> anyway. so, no, have, I don't. we have some wonderful online confessions today guys we have three confessions that i've found online and i feel like you guys are the perfect people to delve out some wisdom to these people and save them from their sins so the first confession guys comes from adam adam writes well it happened that's how he starts oh, shut up adam no one knows michelle's already fed up yeah. i've had enough <laughs> yeah. where do you think Adam's already like one of those people in the media who's got a new job. Some, some personal news. Oh, shut up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you, you work for BuzzFeed now. I get it. Okay. <laughs> We've all got stuff going on, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> well, it happened. I shit my pants at work. Oh. Okay. Okay. Well, well I like the implication of this. Like, I was like, this was inevitable. We all knew this was going to happen. <laughs> at some um, point. <laughs> We've all been there. <laughs> well, we've all been there, of course. You know, okay. everyone in the office has done it at some point. It was yes. my turn. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I, back on board with him, by the way. Oh, you like I, him again? Come back. Yeah, because it went from, well, it happened, to, yeah. well, it happened. Shimmer to something pants. legendary. Just <laughs> shimmer pants. Uh, uh, shimmer pants, yeah. It's so funny. <laughs> we've all been there. We've all been there. <laughs> I've done it in many a confession booth as a priest. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> I've got a confession of my own. <laughs> I'm not going to beat around the bush, but it is single-handedly the most embarrassing thing I've ever done. Yeah, <laughs> it would be. We get it. Bad. It's bad. You shat. In I'd, be, I'd be more worried if it wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. He was like, "But it's fine." <laughs> it's pretty low on the list, to be honest. <laughs> now, to put it bluntly, I'd had a big night the night before. I actually oh. met this great girl, and we're out <laughs> drinking cocktails until the wee hours of the night. Oh, so having a great time. Still goes to can work. He, he be Scottish. Can he be Scottish from now on, Sam? Just because he's uh, me? I can't do a Scottish accent, but I mean... <laughs> the wee hours of the night. <laughs> what if I do it? Well, it's then... happened. I've shit my pants. <laughs> yeah, I've done it. I've, sh <laughs> I've just shat a wee bit. I've got to go. I've got to go. Let's pretend that he's Scottish from now on. All right. Okay. So I don't really know what happened really but I must have been allergic to something I had or took in the morning to wake myself up. No. Plus, plus <laughs> a lot of You just drank coffee. too much and you probably got pegged. <laughs> probably got Suck pegged. Suck it up, heart. You'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> plus a lot of coffee first thing in the morning isn't oh, always yeah. the best thing, of course. Mm. So... The the famous famous took a swig goes. at that very moment. I just saw the show <laughs> take a swig of something. We've, we've, we've got a live one. <laughs> Plus a lot of coffee first thing in the morning isn't always the best thing. So the famous saying goes. Um, I don't know if it is a famous saying, but it's a wonderful <laughs> saying. When in Rome, as the famous saying goes. I think I think it's a I think it's thing, something that people generally agree yeah. with, but uh, I haven't seen it on quotes.com. I'm going to start doing it. Just I shit myself. So the famous saying goes. <laughs> so I'm at my desk while most people are out getting their morning coffee. Oh, <laughs> it's a small enough office. Future problems. Future problems. <laughs> <laughs> it's a small enough office, but I'm the furthest away from the toilet. <laughs> there are a few people around, and I'm feeling awful. It won't yeah. surprise you to know that my stomach started rumbling and then I pooed my pants. I love it that it, 
<laughs> I love it that that was meant to be a surprise. Like, she's such a good, like, oh, he's such a good storyteller that he really built it up like that. But it's like, we know that you shit yourself. It's in the first sentence, mate. It's the first sentence. And pooed. <laughs> pooed. A poop so, pants. A poop pants. So or what do you do? Or no. So what a do you poo. do? <laughs> What do you do, Michelle, in that situation? You feel like you're, you're the furthest away from the toilet. You're in your office. Everyone's out for their morning coffee. What do you do in that situation? Honestly, I would announce to the only people there, I would yeah. say, guys, I'm so sorry. Yeah. I have food. <laughs> and I'm going to travel food. now to the yep. bathroom. And yep. I would love it if yep. you could try Turn and the other not cheek. look at yeah. this. <laughs> Give me this post, one minute. You can film this. For yep. perhaps the thirtieth birthday, the Christmas party. <laughs> yep. Christmas party. But if you if yeah. you're not a close friend, I do ask that you uh, don't laugh and yep. just have a laugh <laughs> with me when I come back. But just for now, while I clean the poop from my butt, <laughs> I'm I'm gonna need you to just concentrate on Excel. <laughs> yeah. Open another spreadsheet for God's sake. <laughs> yeah. I th I think as people, you know, as content makers, I think the first thing we should always say is. Right, guys, can someone get their camera out? I've got an announcement to make. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to want a record of gonna, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just absolutely went for it. I'm so, also, this is about her poo uh, Sorry, Adam. I keep saying her. Adam pooing his <laughs> pants. you're picturing me I'm just, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm picturing <laughs> A beautiful Scottish girl looking exactly like Michelle. <laughs> Just absolutely went for it. I'm so glad that this didn't happen in bed that morning with the great girl, of course. That would be more embarrassing. I that would be very bad. Yeah. Yeah. But then I froze. I didn't know what to do. It might be a bit too full on to walk out and have people realise that I've crapped myself. So I started panning the room with my eyes, Francis. It's very clever to pan with your eyes as well, isn't it? It's a lot easier to do, a lot safer to pan with your eyes than actually start feeling. I'm hoping yeah. there's more like film technique discussion from yeah. her. Yeah. And then I dollied over to the... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, cold, cold open. <laughs> what, what do you, what do you do, Mark, in this situation? So you're, you're scanning, and you want to avoid everybody. You want right. to avoid everyone in this situation. Is there anything you can do to make sure that you're not going to get caught out? If that's what you want. Gosh, this is this is this is tough. First time on I mean, the podcast, and I feel like Andrew Denton asking these hard hitting questions yeah, of you, Mark. Exactly. <laughs> when um, did you become such a hard hitting interviewer, Sam? Okay. Wow. So. So. <laughs> I don't, I don't think I yet have formulated a theory on, on how to approach this. So, yeah. Uh, yeah so, I, okay. So I'm peering over my cubicle and just, to, just, just to see around. I mean, look, I, I think firstly, I'm looking for any um, sort of, uh, uh, you know, paper or anything in the immediate vicinity yeah. uh, that can maybe uh, just do a temporary, because my, what might be concerned at this point is how far has it penetrated? Uh, is it being <laughs> protected by the underpant lining? Um, yeah. And is it now seeping through to the, you know, the jeans or the trousers? Yeah. Yep. How far have we got? And so, can is there anything I can do in the meantime to just create a, a sort of a, a barrier uh, <laughs> and um, to maybe ease yeah. that process? That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking around for any uh, yep. printer, printer paper. Yep. Um, defensive items. Yeah. Defensive items. You're on the defense. Exactly. Yeah. That's it. So I was starting to stress out. I didn't even have a bin in my office since the cleaner Ray took it that morning and had fucking it Ray. Ray, <laughs> Ray, you gotta stop taking me bin. I know it's gonna happen one day, and when it does, Ray, it's happened to everyone in this office, Ray, and you know it's gonna happen to me. <laughs> <laughs> I also love it that we get a name of the cleaner for some reason oh. that does not come back. It's, it's often a point in these wonderful it. stories. Oh. Maybe Ray yeah. is played by a close friend of his. He wanted to get a higher rate for Ray. Yeah. He wanted yeah. to make sure Ray was on IMDb. He's That's true. passing Ray on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is accidental here. We know that. Yeah. If I had a bin, I might have gotten away with it, carried it down the length of the hallway and just disposed of it. I didn't mind if someone thought someone else had done a poo in the office, but I didn't want them to know it was me. So I didn't Mark, mind if someone thought someone else had done a poo in the office, but I didn't want them to know it was me. So if you're carrying a, a bin that Ray has brought back, if you're carrying that bin and going, don't worry, it's someone else's poo, the next question would be, why are you carrying it? Be, well, that's fair. At least you haven't done it. Well, I think I think the other thing we need to remember, of course, is that we've established by the way that this story has been written is that everyone in this office has already shat themselves before. <laughs> so if there is a new shit, they'll go, right, 
Now, hang on, just quick shot. Now, Gary, I know you, you've done a shit. Lisa, you've <laughs> done one. Adam, I'm thinking this could be yours. Is it, it, was, it, was today your day, Adam? So, um, Put your hand up if you've already done a shit in this office. <laughs> right. every, every hand would shoot up straight away. So this, is, this, is, this is what Adam goes on to say. I'm quite handsome and high up in my job. So obviously it might ruin my reputation amongst the others. <laughs> It might if you're handsome. That's the worst. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> I like that. There's a there's a there's a subclass of employee. I was just like, if they shat themselves, don't yeah. Like, if Ray shat himself, yeah, that's, that's a step up for Ray, if anything. <laughs> but, oh God. Yeah, get to executive level and shit yourself. <laughs> That's so funny that he's had his hand. He's up. handsome. Because usually hand Michelle, successful, so I can't, I can't be shitting. Because <laughs> Michelle, that's the, that's the thing in like in the sexy confessions, people often describe themselves as beautiful or anything. I've never heard someone in a shit <laughs> confession describe themselves as handsome. I reckon I'd do that. Which I love. Would you? Yeah. I reckon I'd be like, I'm like a solid seven. People <laughs> like me. I'm doing well. I'm, I'm affable. Shit. I'm high up. I can't be shitting. Yeah, that's the thing. I feel like if I, if for my confession, would be sort of saying, I'm not, I'm not mega famous, but there's a chance that someone might recognise me. Yes. So I just yes. can't be carrying my own shit soiled pants. Yeah. Around in, <laughs> in case you get papped, it's not right. <laughs> so what to do? I edge my way out of the office slightly and see the fire alarm. I just go for it. Ray. People, people, not Ray, Adam. Oh, people, Adam. Oh. Ray, Ray is nowhere to be seen. He's still got that bin. He's walking around with that bin for hours. <laughs> Ray. On, sorry. sorry, can you run that by me again? So he said, yeah. so what's the, what's, the, what's the connection with the fire alarm? What's okay, so he's, he's handsome, Mark. Don't forget that bit. Of course, so, sorry. So, so what do I do? I edge my way out of my office slightly and see the fire alarm. I just go for it. So he pulls no, the fire no. alarm. He pulls the fire alarm. My right, goodness, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It just go for it this. sounds like he's shat again. <laughs> <laughs> and I shit myself again. He sees a fire, fire alarm, gets alarm, startled. Immediately shit. Oh, I'm scared. <laughs> shit. <laughs> People start running out. And as, as soon as that happens, I make my way to the bathroom and clean myself up. I know I don't have long, but then I realise that the alarm would have sounded for nothing. All right, now, you and I, yeah. you, we all know there is such a thing as a, a false alarm. Mm. Yeah. And that is perfectly legit. But what Adam is going to do is he's going to light a fire. <laughs> <laughs> so if you thought the shit was bad enough, yeah. he's going, this is the smartest thing to do in this situation. <laughs> I know I don't have long, but then I realise the alarm would have sounded for nothing. It doesn't take me long to clean myself up, and that's when I have the stupidest idea I think I've ever had. I light, a, <laughs> I light a candle, and I tip it over on someone's desk as I then run outside. God, this explains what happened to Britney Spears' house. <laughs> um, <laughs> the fire nice. truck arrives not long after, and everyone is safe and sound, although a whole cubicle has gone up in flames. <laughs> You're a psycho. And now when people, oh my God, please keep reading. Because if he doesn't get caught, this imagine wow. 20 years later, yeah. 20 years later, yeah. being like, remember when? That hilarious <laughs> that time. Well, when people nearly died in an office. The, the big thing for me here though, is, is the, 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 the great fun he would have had in choosing which cubicle yeah. to go for. Yeah. Just like, it would have been someone from accounts. Yeah, just like that. that if, I'm interested. Yeah. If I'm interested Ray had a desk, he would have been absolutely fucked. <laughs> 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 I knew I was to blame, but I knew that I got yeah. away with it. So he knew that he was to blame. That's good. That's it's good. Taken ownership. He's not a psychopath. <laughs> I, I was free. And then I remember the security cameras. And now it's been two days. And I've been stressing about my boss looking through them to see what happened. Oh. Me carrying my shitty pants <laughs> to the toilet and then burning a desk down. <laughs> Is it something I now have to come clean about to keep my job? Oh I my don't God. think I'll be holding on to that job for much longer if they oh find out what God. I did. Now, wouldn't that be the most amazing surveillance footage ever? Oh I... my goodness incredible love this this is like a hangover film yeah like, this is like that level of insane <laughs> stupidity that this you could see 
like Seth Rogen's doing this. Or yeah, something. yeah. Well, what would you do, Michelle, in this situation? If if you would you come clean to if your I'd boss and that. say, "Look, heads up, um, <laughs> no. I no shit way. myself. Yeah. I've shit myself. One thing led to another. I burnt a desk down. <laughs> no way. I'm burning down the fucking surveillance. Oh, you'll you'll get rid of the cameras. You take I'm them out. going further. Yeah. I yeah. there's no way. Kill the security guy. If I'd done that, I would be so humiliated. I'd, I'd have to kill someone. Surely you'd have to of kill course. someone. Of course. I, that goes without saying. I'd be so in my own head. I think I'd go to my boss and I'd open with, here's the good news. Uh, I didn't <laughs> shit myself with this good looking bird last night. Um, <laughs> so, sorry, why are you telling me this? No, hang on, there's a point. There's a point. Um, yeah. <laughs> Gosh, this is, because I, I don't know how you guys, what you guys are like, I'm guessing you're empathetic people, but I feel like when I hear something like this, and I've never heard anything like this, but if I hear... Welcome to the podcast, of, Matt. Yeah. I, <laughs> my, I, I switch bodies with that person. I am yeah. that person right yeah. now. And, uh, and I hate it. Um, <laughs> Well, yeah. it's very stressful and it's a, it's a series of events as well. It's not like he just shit himself and then that was the most embarrassing thing that happened. Then he decided to get a candle and burn down a desk. Also, can we just go back to the way he started? This was, well, it's happened. Yeah. <laughs> well, it happened. <laughs> I burned down a desk after shitting my pants. So we've all done it. As the saying goes. Yeah, as the uh, famous so saying funny. goes. So what would you do, so Mark, bad. in this situation? What would you do okay. as Adam? What do you do? I'm definitely investigating the video option. So I'm, sure. I'm, 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 I'm making inquiries just, just, just gently yep. internally about how does the whole camera system work around here? Is, sure. have, is there a security? Maybe leaning on Ray. I feel like Ray's got keys. Like yep. Ray, yeah. Ray, if Ray's got bins, Ray's got keys. Exactly. Um, so, you got a door, you got a gym, you got a Ray, you got a bin, you got a key. That's it. What Go up to Ray. That's it. Got to Ray and go, well, it happened. And, uh, and Ray, Ray will go, I'm right ahead of you. I'll delete the tape. Um, <laughs> and, uh, oh, God. This so you is... think make another friend. You don't think come clean to the boss, Mark. You're saying don't, don't no go way. straight to the boss. No. Uh, uh, no. What I would actually do is I am the sort of person that would go to the boss and say, I just need to, yeah, I would just lay it all out on the line. All you need to say is, well, it happened. Because you know what sort of office he's working in. Everyone's been there. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'd have my resignation letter filled out and, and basically kind of be overly dramatic and right. say, I'm going to walk out the door. I'm going to walk out the door. But before I do, I need to tell you this. And then, and then, and then hopefully, with the, you know, the hope they go, you know what, it's not so bad. And, and, and play on that empathy and beg them to not. They'll tell people. They'll tell. Of course they're going to tell someone. Who but am I kidding? <laughs> and is it better to, to, to relieve yourself of that guilt? Is it better to yes. do that other than... I, I'm, a great believer. I'm a great believer in that. Absolutely, yes. No, I, 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 as a child, I, uh, I, I didn't confess to uh, uh, an accident that occurred at my school. Did uh, you shit yourself? No, no. Did it was kill not. a kid? No. It was, I was <laughs> Which a one was it? One or the other? You can never... <laughs> it's definitely one of those. <laughs> that was a minor thing. It was where... Back, you remember when schools used to have computer rooms? There was this one room, oh, yeah. room that had computer and uh, there was a, it, it was uh, raining one day, and in the computer room uh, there was a leak. And uh, so I remember being in the computer room, and everyone would go to the computer room at lunchtime if it was raining, because what else are you going to do, you know, when it's raining outside? And uh, so there was one chair that was basically catching, or had been catching water. Um, and uh, some kids said, "Oh, there's nowhere for me to sit down." I was like, "Just sit on this chair," and I poured the water off the chair onto the floor of the computer room. And I didn't oh, think anything, didn't you're think anything. You trying to be a good person. I was trying to you be were. helpful, exactly. I just thought, oh, why is there water on this chair? And then after lunch, uh, someone come, the teacher comes in and says, uh, there is water on the floor in the computer room. There are cables running there through there. There is electricity all through there. Who poured the water on the uh, comp floor of the computer room? And to this day, I've never owned up to it. But you oh didn't even God. pour it. There was a leak. Yeah. It wasn't your it was fault. A, I know, exactly. But, but like, I think in their head, I should have been smart. Oh, I should have. Should yeah. have been smart enough to go, oh, leave the chair. It's clearly a water retaining chair. No, a chair is not a bucket. <laughs> no, this is not on you. Thank you, Michelle. I feel better already. Uh, this is great. Because the confession, yeah. <laughs> What are you talking about? <laughs> this is not your fault at all. Yeah. You should have just been like, oh, Michelle standing there up. There was a leak. This is where I am. I got up. I would be like, there was a leak. Yeah. And I saw the leak and I didn't. 
do anything. I'm sorry I didn't put a bucket under the leak. Yeah. I saw yeah. A, I saw a leak. I didn't put a bucket under it. I should have yeah. done that. I'm sorry. I thought a teacher yeah. would do it because I'm just a fucking kid. <laughs> The, uh, the I mean, I so, guess I, yeah. th I think I felt bad because it was then the teacher then started singling out the usual suspects. Oh my God. I was, oh. you know, I was, let's, let's, to borrow Adam's phrase, I was a handsome kid. You know, yeah. I was the least likely <laughs> to pour water on the floor of the computer room. Sure. And so she starts, the teacher starts honing in on people that are likely suspect. But I, I said nothing. I was paralyzed with fear. It was like that scene in Hook where he's like trying to find who amongst us does not belong. And then he zooms in on Glenn Close dressed as a man. This is a very specific <laughs> reference. But, uh, and, uh, and real, but meanwhile, uh, Peter Pan says nothing. I was Peter Pan in that uh, moment. And if you haven't seen Hook, that anecdote makes no sense. No, 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 I stopped the podcast and watched this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't add us. We don't need to hear about it. Yeah, yeah. Watch it. It. Pause the podcast, watch Hook, come back. That is, that, that is the wrong thing to do, to not let the teacher know when somebody else is going to get in trouble for it. Yeah. Well, no one else got in trouble, but she just started, you know. Oh, well, then that's invest okay. Invest yeah. If no one got caught, like... Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. So she, was, you know what? That was an opportunity to just um, spotlight some bias that that teacher yeah. had. Probably classism. Yeah. Well, yeah. Completely. Yeah, classism. Probably some disability stuff in there. There were probably kids with ADHD who were being singled out, exactly. I would say. Yep. I reckon well, she's a bitch or I he's a bitch. a bitch. He or she is a bitch. <laughs> or they are a bitch. Hey, men can be teachers too, Michelle. I think that person was a bitch. No, men can't be teachers, Sorry, Sam. No, I'm dumb. I'm dumb. <laughs> I'm dumb. I'm dumb. Look, goodness I, sake. Oh, goodness <laughs> sake. Goodness gracious me. Look, uh, my, my friend was telling me the other day that uh, he, he had a great story that he didn't want me to tell on a podcast, but I will tell it. I just won't name it. <laughs> but he, um, he told me that... Don't he, tell this on the he, podcast. He really, he really, he really missed That's always my segue to tell something on a podcast. Um, that he was at a bar and threw up all over the bar and then someone, the, the bartender was like, did you, did you just throw up? And he said, no. <laughs> <laughs> and he just stood his ground. And I reckon if you deny no. stuff sometimes, if you just go, no, that never happened. I, I remember being in an Uber a little while ago, me and the great Wes Snelling were in an Uber together. I love And Wes performer Snelling. Scott Brennan. And we were, we were in the, we were in the uh, I love Uber Scott Brennan too. And, yeah, thank God you said that, because imagine I'd release that, not good. And um, <laughs> not, good, not good for performer Scott Brennan. And then we were in the, and we had a, a, a a few bottles of wine in the back seat. It it fell over and smashed when he went oh. around a corner. And then the driver did say, "Did you just hear a smash?" And I said, "No." <gasps> but then you I went, dog. "Yeah." But then I went, "Yeah, it's red wine." Because I was like, "That's gonna actually go everywhere." Oh I gosh. Like, I wanted to have my friends approach it being, "No." No. But then going, oh shit. So do you think in this scenario, maybe it's better to just deny everything if it comes out michelle would you just deny because you're saying don't tell the boss no i just well i just think do everything you can to keep this under wraps because it's the most insane thing i've ever heard <laughs> i also have a really big fear of fire so it's huge right. for me yeah. to, to try and <laughs> empathize with this man but like i just i would definitely i think the soft questioning that mark was saying about the security cameras like i would yep. make up a story for sure i'd be like i just need to see them I know. I, I would just say, you know, I just, I keep putting my something somewhere yeah. and I can't, can oh, I have yeah. access to footage so I can see where I keep leaving it because I have to yeah. keep buying, I keep buying takeaway coffee cups because I yeah. can't find my keep cup. I keep putting it down. I keep shitting myself. Oh no. Can we just watch it? So I can see Rewind. where I've shat. Cause I can't remember. <laughs> I keep leaving my shit everywhere. Um, but yeah, no, I think I just, yeah, I would Veronica Mars all yep. the way until I had to tell the truth and then I would leave the fucking country. And never come back. <laughs> so I would bad. change, I would change jobs. I would change <laughs> careers. I'd go and work in it's Antarctica. It's a terrible thing to do. Yeah. I have this fear, I have this recurring dream that I started having when I was a kid that I'd accidentally killed somebody oh, and that God. I was going well, to go to prison. Well, you'd already confessed to it. you actually told me this dream. You could tell the priest I did confess. I did confess to it, but I just was so scared. I was so scared of accidentally killing someone and going to prison as a small child. And so this makes me feel that way. Yeah, yeah. I feel the Stressed, same way. Anxious. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I feel the same. I feel the same stress as when I was uh, three years old and, and ate an, an apple seed and knew that an apple tree would grow inside of me. And that, that this is how I die. Yeah. And there's nothing you can grow. do about it. There's nothing you can do about it. Nothing you can do. Well, I feel like we have solved Adam's problems, guys. <laughs> I think we have completely solved Adam's problem because the next confession, guys, comes from Ingrid. Ingrid confesses. I keep having sex with married men. 
Oh. <laughs> I was like, you yeah, keep having sex, Ingrid. Stop it. Yeah. It happened. Just be yeah. safe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it I happened. had sex. <laughs> Continuously. I don't know what it is, really. The charm of married men drives me wild and the way no. they look at me. I no. don't know they're married. I'll tell you what it is, Ingrid. You want to feel wanted. Yep. You need to feel wanted. And you're attracted to men who aren't good. <laughs> who aren't good. Just aren't good. You don't value yourself, Ingrid. No, Ingrid doesn't. You, but you find value in your, perhaps your looks, perhaps yep. uh, your body. Mm. And uh, you find men who are bad to validate that for you. So move on. Next. <laughs> Next I, one. I, I don't know they're married, of course, when I sleep with them. Yes, but you But after do. a while, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I kept doing it. It became a real kink of mine, being the other Not woman and all. No. Kink is just having sex with married men. <laughs> I love to um, hurt people. It's just a it's kink. It's just horny. Like, I love to be like, oh, this is going to end badly. Wow. It's so fun. <laughs> it works for me. It's my aesthetic. It's my aesthetic. <laughs> I fucked my way through to mid-20s and knew that I could always get by on my looks. So, like, like Adam, she is handsome. But hang on, what? What is, how is fucking married men getting by? What is that? I don't know what, 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 I don't know what it means. <laughs> Just I getting mean, by. Getting oh, by. I, how are you doing at the moment? Oh, I get by. Oh, so you fuck married men. What? Yeah, yeah. what? No. What? Yeah, oh, what isn't, isn't that what that phrase means? Yeah, explain yourself. You don't make this it sense. This is insane. Yeah. yeah. Just get a job as a sex worker and make some money from it. And there you go. Move on. Yeah. Get out of here. Ingrid. I, get out of here. I knew that one day I would get a fat ass and men wouldn't look at me in the same way. Uh, excuse me. Men love fat asses. It's they 2020. Do. Yes. Look it up. You can look that Speaking up. Speaking as somebody, somebody with a fat ass <laughs> and Spanish heritage and Latin American, I would like to say I've... I've fucked several married men with this fat ass. And Thank we'll you very much. And will continue to do so. Thank and you And will continue much. to do so. <laughs> a penis here. My partner's in the there. next room. <laughs> <laughs> a penis here, a penis there. We penis. do what we do to get by. <laughs> That's 100% right. That's all they were to me at the time. But now I'm, true. Well, now I'm 28 years old and I have fallen in love with a married man. His name is okay. Len. What did she do? How did she get from 25 to 28? Yeah, she just aged. But <laughs> she just moved okay, forward. Okay, because that's I don't how I explain this to you. Yeah. Well. Move, move forward in time at the same pace that time proceeds, I think. Um, <laughs> it's all complicated. It's the... She fucked her way to 25 and then she just aged her way to 28. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds bad. So now his name is Len, did Len. you say? Len. Len, Len and Ray, I feel, would be friends. There's, there's a certain, yeah. I feel that Len, Len feels like he, Len's an old name. How it old is, is isn't Len? It? Well, we don't know. It never really goes into it, but I imagine, I imagine he's an older man. I imagine he's, he's, a, he's a silver fox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, his name is Len, and I knew from the moment I met him at a hotel bar that he would be a lot of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> of course he is. Len would be a lot of trouble. <laughs> As soon as you hear the name Len, you go, uh-oh. Uh-oh, that's out. trouble. Len, is he a bikey? What a bad boy. But you don't even use a coaster, do you, Len? coming for me. <laughs> he told me that he was only in town for a night and that he was married. I told him that I'm wanting to sit on his face for one night only. And that would work out fine too. That's just good banter. And that's, that's how great. they fell in love. And that is gorgeous. And I feel like... My concern is that Len is of an age where he doesn't necessarily understand the idea of sitting on someone's face. But I, I mean, look, yeah, I'm, sure, I was, yeah. I'm sure people sat on each other's face, uh, you know, during the, the you know the Great the war. war and all. Yeah, the Cold War. <laughs> the Great War. <laughs> Great War. <laughs> Please continue. But you know, sorry, no, we're on the same page here, clearly. Um, but yes, just I, I just just don't know if Len would would know that that was a come on, mm. or whether that was something that. Uh, he'd be concerned about especially the size of the ass he's like that sounds like a health risk because len is you know <laughs> at his age. he's got breathing it. problems it is <laughs> that's yeah. right and so place. and so he took me up to his hotel room all right uh so and so michelle you know you know that this um the sentences can go from woe to go in a second yeah. but mark i do apologize for this uh first time being on the podcast this is a rude awakening and so he took me up to his hotel room and i took to his cock like a dog with a ham <laughs> <laughs> uh... 
<laughs> he just sunk her teeth in. Like a, a dog with a ham. My goodness. And That's yeah. the least tawny thing I've ever Isn't it heard. gross? What a thing to say. And, just savaged it. And Len's savaged. got real. I mean, at, at his age, Len's balls, I think, are, you know, oh, yeah. quite yeah. droopy <laughs> and... Uh, yeah, no, that's that's quite. Len amazing. isn't what he used to be. <laughs> Len needs a gentle touch. He does. His skin yeah. isn't what it was. He doesn't need an Ingrid. I'm like, on his I'm face. talking like he's 85. He's 55. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, poor Len trying to walk. On. <laughs> I was absolutely loving it, and all night I was making love, fucking, and drinking high shelf champagne. You know when you high have a night like that. High shelf champagne. Like, High shelf champagne. High shelf champagne. The more expensive okay. ones when they put them up top. Champagne I think. doesn't go on the shelf. Champagne is refrigerated. You're <laughs> thinking of perhaps a whiskey. Or oh, a top shelf whiskey. Spirit. Yes. Yeah. There's yeah. no shelf in champagne. You're a fucking idiot. <laughs> and you would know that. You would know more about expensive fancy alcohols <laughs> if you would just monetize this. This just drives me insane. The, yeah. These whenever I hear it, because this happens a lot, Sam, on the pod. Sure. You hear these people who have these stories and they're like, I just like <laughs> ruining people's relationships. And it's like, okay, oh. well, for starters, you're not ruining the relationship. It's already ruined. So don't give yourself as much power as you think you have. Also, if you're enjoying this so much, why don't you monetize it? Why don't you just be a sex worker? Yep. And then you can stop talking about it. You don't have to confess about it. And you can not take up any of my time. Mm-hmm. And you can learn about alcohols because you can be a high class sex worker if you want. Or a low class. I don't care. You can High shelf prostitute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have that low shelf champagne sex work of life. I don't care. But just why why do you put yourself through this pain when there yeah. are people who do this for a job and you could have you could do this for a job, have a great time. Own it. Own it. Own it. These are great points. It was seriously <laughs> it was seriously one of the best experiences of my life. And what, after all was said and done, I knew he had to go home to his gl- wife Gloria in Sydney. Gloria. Oh, Gloria. Yeah. Gloria and Len in Sydney. <laughs> Phone in. <laughs> Phone in. Yeah, if you're listening, we'll wait. I don't reckon there's heaps of Gloria and Lens. I don't think so either. Mm. Yeah, we could find them. Mark, you're in Sydney, aren't you? We could find yeah. them. Yeah, we could find Gloria? them. Gloria? Yeah. Yeah. What's your husband's name? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I asked him to leave her for me. He After told one me. Night? <laughs> yeah, one night. <laughs> I shall one champagne, night of Michelle. <laughs> um, were you Which listening goes very to high shell champagne? I, and you've heard of the phrase champagne ham, haven't you? <laughs> 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 he told me, of course, he isn't going to tell his wife, Gloria. They never do. Married men are like rats, really. All right, this is a great metaphor. <laughs> Married men are like rats, really. They're cute and they act on instinct, but are impossible to train. Believe me, I've tried. Do you, you, do you agree with rats. that? You can? Are rats, are, you can train rats. Okay. My issue is our rats. Oh, I just blow it apart. I think rats are cute. I think rats can be cute. And I also think they can also be trained. Okay. Have you tried to train a rat, Michelle? No, but I've met a trained rat. Okay. That's pretty and cool. And it was cute. Yeah. I was like, hey. And it was like, hey. Uh, hi, I'm a trained rat. Hey. And it was like, do you want to fuck me? And I was like, no, <laughs> no I can no, see your, way, your wedding ring. <laughs> <laughs> Little rat. What would you do, Mark, Little in this rat? situation? So you want to tell, basically, if you were Ingrid in this situation, you've made love mm-hmm. to... To, to beautiful Len, you know, you've taken to him like a, sure. like a ham. Uh, what, would you, what would you do in this situation? So he said to you, look, I'm not going to tell my beautiful wife, Gloria, who I'm married to for 35 years. I love Gloria. I've made yep. a mistake. Yep. Yeah. Et cetera. So yep. this is, this, I'll level with you. This is requiring a lot of imagination on my part. So, uh, so, I'm, <laughs> so I've, I've met an older man who's married yep. and, and I, want to tell, I, want, I want to convince him to... Leave um, his wife, Gloria. Yes, yeah. right. Um, pregnant. I'm trying to, well, just say, just, say, just say that you're pregnant. Is that just your call answer? him and say, pregnant. 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 <laughs> Hang up. <laughs> well, it's happened. I don't got a pet right now. I've got a pet right. <laughs> just, I think you just get, you get Gloria on the phone. Get her on the phone. Just get yeah. Gloria on the oh, phone. God, poor of course. Because as well. we've established in Sydney, there aren't that many Lennon and Glorias. No, so she's not. just quickly checked the white pages. And mm. uh, there's the name. And away we go. Yeah, I think bring Gloria. Yeah, because, yeah. Because that surely won't backfire. He'll surely, he'll yeah, surely, it's going to be surely, fine. He'll love you for that. Yeah, uh, appreciate that for ruining, <laughs> that. ripping his life apart. Just throw a grenade into his his home. That'd be good. He'd love that. I think it's probably best if I tell Gloria. She deserves to know. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right. Okay. She, she deserves to know, and we deserve to be together. 
I've never you and met... Gloria? Yeah, yeah, I'm in a movie with Gloria. <laughs> Gloria I, does. It sounds like Gloria honestly deserves for somebody to take to her privates like a dog to a ham. Honestly, yeah. she it deserves a Gloria Jeans. We don't know. She could be a she could be, you know, a big wig in the scene, in the coffee she scene. We don't be. know. Yeah. I have never met a man like Len before. He seems to understand all that I have to offer. And it's a fucking lot more than Gloria can hand over. All right, so she's throwing some Gloria shade. Gloria alone. Yeah. Hey, come on. Gloria is probably having a... Gloria's, you know... Gloria's been sitting on Len's face since yeah. the outbreak of the Spanish flu. Exactly. And, you know, you don't understand what, uh, what they've been through. I think she's making... This, I, this young lady's making a lot of assumptions about she is. where she is. champagne is placed and how trainable are <laughs> rats. I think she's, <laughs> she's just not really across it. Not yet. She's got that life experience that Gloria has. She hasn't got it yet. I've been with so many married men and Len is the only one who has stuck with me. The only he, man who has what? taken... The Leave only, her. I, I, think, I think that she thinks like has, has really stayed with her. In, oh, okay. Oh, right, in her okay. head. Yeah. I've been, she's not a good writer. I'll say that. Len is the only one I'm still masturbating. Yeah. <laughs> I've been with so many married men and men and Len is the only I've been with one. so many married men. <laughs> yeah. And the only one who has stuck with me, the only man who has taken my heart and not given it back. I think about him constantly and I'm going to do everything in my womanly power to rip his family apart. Am I being crazy? I feel pretty strongly that I'm not. That comes from Ingrid. What do you think, Michelle? I think I actually think, yeah, no, she's being really normal and it's, yeah. everything's fine. Behaving in a normal way. I think, I think using phrases is like, I'm going to rip his family apart are very normal things to say. The normal things to say. What, when I love someone, I think, how can I rip? <laughs> <laughs> your family apart how can i tear it yeah. limb from that's limb? that you see that hallmark card on valentine's day that's yeah. just basically that's a standard uh you know insert i'm gonna <laughs> rip your family apart yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do mark in this situation do you think that she just needs to move on with her goddamn life ingrid and leave think, gloria the hell alone i think <laughs> I, I, this is going to shock you. I think Ingrid is bad news. Oh, no. <laughs> I thought, oh, no. Because I thought that Len was the one that was trouble. <laughs> no, oh, not at wow. all. I, I think... reckon Len is trouble. Yeah. Oh, like, oh sure. without a doubt. Yeah. yeah. Oh, definitely. Bad boy. But at this point, I feel like it's... Uh, God, I was about to give it another really obscure old film reference. It's Do like... It. Uh, well, no, it's, it's like uh, What Lies Beneath. He's like Harrison Ford. He's had an affair with... Uh, no one's seen What Lies Beneath. That's a terrible uh, <laughs> reference. Well, uh, again, look it after you've seen Hook. I'm going to watch that, it. Watch that, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Directed by Robert Zemeckis, you know, who did right. uh, you know, Back to the Future. So that's, right. uh, that's that. Um, yeah, yeah, oh, God. Uh, you know, I, 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 I would just want to, I, I want to advise Len at this point. I don't mm. want to even invite, in, in, in advise, uh, what was her name, Ingrid? Ingrid. Mm -hmm. Ingrid, right. You think you think Len just needs to move on and, and, and maybe block her out of his life? Yeah, I think yeah. Len needs yeah. to probably be honest with Gloria, which is unfortunate because Gloria shouldn't have to cop, like, cop no. the, the, the sins of, of him. She on a business trip. With, I think yeah. Ingrid could, do, could become a great marriage counsellor. I think she should start reaching <laughs> She's got out what it takes. Him. Exactly, and just say, um, uh, uh, what's Len's wife called? Gloria. 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 This is a champagne ham. What would you do with it? And, <laughs> and then just sort of work from there. I think that's, that, there's a business, again, a business opportunity yep. here to help these couples um, <laughs> be so selfish. Do you agree, Michelle? Do you think there's any way forward for Ingrid? What do you think she needs to do? Um, go and see a counsellor. Go and see a counsellor. Some self work yep. elsewhere. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All, good advice. All good advice. All good advice. Well, we've got the final confession that comes from Deb and... I, I know already that you both are going to hate Deb. Um, okay, good. Deb, Deb does one of the most fuck things I think Looking forward um, to I've it. ever read in a confession. Can't wait. So I've got this friend, Sandra. Okay. Let me tell you about Sandra. That's why she's answered. We're, we're going to learn about Sandra. She's the nastiest piece of work you will ever meet. Sandra has done more damage to our friendship than anyone I've ever known before. So bad news, basically. Trouble. Trouble. More damage to our friendship than anyone before. Gosh, what could that... Sounds like a bad that? friendship circle, doesn't it? If she's comparing... <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Of all, all the, the fucked up things that my, yeah. my very close friends have done to me, Sandra <laughs> really takes the cake. 
And I'm honestly she, thinking about rescinding the invitation to uh, our dinner party tomorrow night. Um, she says the worst possible things in any given situation and on more than one occasion has ruined a potential relationship for me by telling the person something rank about me. <laughs> Is she 15? Yeah, I think she might be 15. <laughs> um, she smells. She farts. Heaps of smells like eggs. <laughs> Yeah. I'm actually in on Deb. I actually- love Deb. If she's 15, I love that she's like, the irreparable damn it to our friendship. We're never going to be friends ever again. I just hate it. Sandra and I have been friends forever. And a lot of the time, I feel she like... Is she, she is 15. She is 15. She's going to be... Because for, forever is what? Was that nine months? Was yeah. <laughs> forever. We will never... We've got friendship bracelets. We're going to be friends forever. And a lot of the time, I feel like packing our relationship in. I, kind, I-, of, I kind of like seeing... As ha- I kind of feel like it's like seeing hand. Okay, what she means is <laughs> it's kind of like handing the keys back to a house you don't want anymore, or a car, whatever takes your fancy. Okay, yeah, she's yeah, not no, fifteen. She, no, hang on, but I think she is fifteen because uh, when, when do you hand the keys to a house that you don't want anymore? What is that? <laughs> this, is like yeah, a, this is not some sort of returns policy they have on a house. I don't kids. want any more. <laughs> I don't want it. I, I don't it. want a refund, please. <laughs> Get rid of the keys back. That's all I owe you. Thank yeah. you and good night. I want yeah. to exchange this one because actually the roof's <laughs> leaking and there's water in the computer room, please. Do you have a Do you have a fresh one in the warehouse? Do you have one out <laughs> back that doesn't uh, have a <laughs> have a leaky roof? So, uh, <laughs> a few weeks ago, we were out and Sandra was getting ridiculously hammered. Oh, okay. Yeah. Get it, Sandra. Right. Passion Get it. pop. Yep. One, on Sandra's <laughs> one thing you need to know about Sandra is that when she gets drunk, she gets mean. Oh, very mean. That, and that's and that Sandra's unique in that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the only person in the world. Wow, that sounds crazy. It sounds kind of crazy. <laughs> and I'm left thinking, why be like this? Have you guys ever had that situation where you've just <laughs> been like left this. thinking, why be like this? Hey, <laughs> hey, why be like this? Hey, why be like this? <laughs> hey, why be like this? <laughs> so The girlfriends and I are having a great time, but as the night goes on, everyone is getting sick of Sandra's shit. Of course. Why be like this? Hey, Sandra, (laughs) why be like this? (laughs) Hey, it me. Death, why be like this? (laughs) Everyone's wondering how we can get out of it and leave Sandra. As her oldest friend, I always feel like I need to stay around for a little bit longer. Right, so what do you do in this situation? So, Michelle, imagine you're out with the girls having a great night. You know, you're having a few frosés, you're having a few espresso martinis, and then all of a sudden, that's what girls do, right? And then all of that's a sudden... That's what we do. Yeah, I read about it. Um, and, then, and, then, and then all of a sudden, you've got this friend Sandra getting ridiculously drunk and slagging you off. What do you do? Mm. <laughs> I don't think I have friends who would do that. But if I had a friend who was doing that, I'd be like, hey. Yep. I... Are you okay? Why are you being? Why, are you being why be like this? Yeah. <laughs> and then if they said, "What are you talking about?" I yeah. say, "All right, it's home All time. Right. Home time for you. Yeah. Home time for you. Yep. That's enough. Talk to you in the morning." Well, because this is what happens. This is what happens. She says, "Sandra starts slagging me off in front of everyone, saying that no one will ever love me, and talking about my giant pussy." <laughs> Listen, no, everyone, listen, everyone in the bar, listen, ding, 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 listen, this Deb, <laughs> no one ever going to love her because, do you know what, the pussy is giant, <laughs> she'll come here, no, it's giant, every, every, man, every man is going to feel like he's got a small dick, <laughs> <laughs> and it's not good, men don't like, men will feel big, men will feel big, non side Deb feel small. <laughs> <laughs> you'd listen to her you'd listen to Sandra when she's talking like that of course she's got she's got so much knowledge the a command knowledge. of a room oh, she can command a whole room with her pussy talk yes I've had enough and that's kind of the last straw for me I mean fair enough I've got yeah I mean if you're doing that telling Sam, everyone in the bar you stood up at a bar and yeah, said no one's ever gonna love Michelle <laughs> <laughs> pussy is giant everyone I would probably join in the speech yeah. as a fun and you would <laughs> say hey why be like this why be like this so an hour or so passes, and I know Sandra is going to be back, oh, going to be blackout drunk pretty soon. 
She always gets like that when we're having a few shandies with the girls. <laughs> oh, a few shandies. A few shandies. <laughs> shandies? Now I don't know what age they are anymore. I've lost, lost track. It's blown it out. Yeah. <laughs> shandies? But she uses the word pussy. <laughs> and, and rank. Yeah. And God, she's a she time She is traveler. a lower socioeconomic background. Yep. 58-year-old woman. <laughs> if she says Who's never owned a home. That. No. Oh, and who has a back. daughter, but her daughter's her friend, not really her daughter. You That's, know? Yeah. yeah. She, she can't hand the keys back to any house. Because she doesn't own it. <laughs> and Sandra's an alcoholic, twice Sandra. divorced. <laughs> and not in a powerful Betty White, twice divorced way. I think you are dead right about that, Michelle. It's going to get ugly, as it always does. So after years of this constant torment and her talking about my big pussy... I, <laughs> <laughs> this is not well, the first time this has come up. Deb, listen, how big is it? Because <laughs> seriously, it keeps everyone's up. talking about it. Yeah, yeah. This is, you think the issue is Sandra, but yeah. well, really, Deb, let's... your pussy is taking up so much space. So yeah. much Whatever. space. Look, look how much space it takes up in this story. I mean, that's just <laughs> representative. Of how big it you should is. see it at the dinner table. <laughs> <laughs> the girls all go home, and I'm fed up with Sandra and I tell her they're going to put her in a fucking taxi. Oh, all right. So as I do though, something crazy comes over me. All right. So Mark, what would you do in this situation? If you're thinking as Deb, all right. If you're thinking as Deb in this situation, what is the crazy thing that you're going to do to, to Sandra? So I put her in a, I put her in a cab, put her in a cab, put her in a cab. And she, so she already knows. So I'm not going to flash. I'm not going to flash her because she already knows the size of my pussy. She knows. So she knows the size of the pussy. I don't need to, <laughs> so I'm not going to do that. Okay. Again. Yeah. Again. Oh, this is interesting. Something crazy. Maybe is there someone she can call? Is wow. Someone, is yeah. Someone, okay. Calls, All right. It's going to get intense. Okay. It's going to get intense. All right. So the driver asks where to, and I give him some cash and write oh. down an address which is over 50 minute drive away. Oh. You have paid for this. She has paid for this. I tell her that she's so drunk she won't actually remember that she lives there. She then, and then they're off. The driver takes her there. And when I wake up in the morning, I think, holy fucking shit, what have I done? <laughs> <laughs> I am instantly remorseful. And yeah, when Deb, I, that's when, so unsafe. That's You're so insane. Unsafe and, fucked. and when I see Sandra again, she tells me that she needs to quit drinking that she ended up in Werribee and has no idea how she got there. Okay, so Werribee's just outside Melbourne. Yep. We could find these women, Sam. We live in Melbourne. <laughs> Let's go and find them. So oh, Werribee is, is far away. They live at least 50 minutes from Werribee. 50 minutes from Werribee. I reckon is... I've been picturing this whole thing at the Great Northern Hotel, which is quite oh, really? close to my house. Yeah, okay. that's where I've been picturing it. That's where I have my <laughs> shandies with that's the girls. That's where you have your shandies. Yeah. yeah. Constant shandy girl. Well... I have felt awful about it ever since and don't know whether or not I can come clean to her. It no. obviously feels like the right thing to do. I don't. do understand that. But I wonder if a friend needs to hear this and if she'll stop talking about my big pussy. Okay, <laughs> this, there's two separate issues here. <laughs> now, did you add that last bit, Sam? Did no, like, no, that's actually what it said. says, yeah. Oh, all right, okay. <laughs> so, so what do you think? What do you think... Uh, Michelle, in this situation, you think there's two separate issues here? Oh, there's Bruce. Yeah. Oh, hey, Bruce. That's beautiful dog, Bruce. He's just, He's just come in the door. Hey, Bruce. So, <laughs> I mean, this is a terrible thing you can do to a friend. It's a terrible, terrible yes. thing. Just leaving someone who's that drunk. It's blackout drunk that you go, they won't remember. They certainly won't remember me putting them in there. And then just leave them there. So, she had done a terrible thing to Sandra. And no talk of big pussies is going to... You know, come over that. So I, I think you have to stop being friends with Sandra because she keeps talking about your big pussy. Yeah. But I think you should talk to Sandra and say, please stop talking about my big pussy. It makes me feel bad. <laughs> and also, Sandra, don't tell Sandra because it's prompted her to stop drinking. Yeah. And that's a good thing because mm -hmm. she obviously is drinking too much and has a drinking problem. Sure. And I think also maybe you need to stop drinking because last time you got drunk, you put your friend in a taxi <laughs> and said, to the wilderness. <laughs> Yeah, I I, I, th I think you tell I think you do it in a kind of very kind of poetic cinematic way where you sort of say, Sandra, you need to stop talking about my big pussy. Sure. You need to <laughs> you need to stop drinking so much, or else 
someone might give a taxi driver the wrong address when you have had too much to it was you and then, and, that, and that's how and that's how you that's do how it. you get them that's how, that's you, how get you get them that's, that's how you it. get them so do you think in this situation there is yeah there's any good with her coming clean to to sandra do you think there's any situation where you can actually come clean and say this is what i did i did a terrible thing and ask for her forgiveness i think you should in a normal situation but i think because of this mm. situation i don't think sandra is the kind of person who is going to stop drinking and really mm. um look at I, th I think she's accidentally done Sandra a favour, but she right. also could have sent her to her death. Sure. So I think... <laughs> that always happens. It's a jigsaw. Like, you know... <laughs> <laughs> I just think... I, don't, I wouldn't tell her because I think then she's just going to be like, this fucking bitch. And then she won't think about her own responsibility in her drinking. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because she just as easily could have gotten into a taxi and been like... Mm. Bleh. Of course, yeah. yeah. Um, I'd like to think that Sandra's the sort of person that would go online, would Google, woke up Werribee how? <laughs> Why did? <Yeah>. Then, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then find this, and then find this, uh, this, this article. You know, I'm with Michelle. I think, I think uh, Sandra, I mean, because Sandra is, is okay, let's not, let's not rock the boat. Sandra doesn't really deserve to know the truth. Um, she doesn't deserve this, no, because this big pussy thing is clearly it's it's eating up. She mentioned it three times. It's big pussy That's, thing. She, yeah. you know, she mentioned Deb mentioned it so many times. I thought she was Sandra. Um, <laughs> so yeah, no, I think I think let 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 that go. And um, but I I mean, but just generally, you, you, we've got to we've got to cut Sandra from the group though. Mm. Um, yeah, I think so too. She sounds awful. Quite toxic. Yeah, yeah. she's quite toxic. <laughs> she's shandies and she starts going. No one will ever love you and your big yeah. pussy. Yeah, pretty the, pretty full on. At the end of that, guys, we have solved three problems. <laughs> if you were to be able to make one of these a feature length film and then get to choose the casting, who would you choose to make a film about? You've got Deb with her big pussy and her good friend Sandra. You've got Ingrid who keeps having sex with married men, and then you've got Adam who shit himself and then tried to cover it up <laughs> it's by burning the place down. It's got to be. It's got to be one or three. I think Ingrid is not worth our, our time. Um, mm. The uh, that movie's what, been made too. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen that movie so many times. What are you leaning towards, Michelle? Which which story do you like more? Well, I mean, I work primarily in comedy. I could make myself a job by making the first oh, sure. one a feature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think the last one. I mean, strong female characters. Um, <laughs> Very strong. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> um, I think the, I reckon the first one. The first okay. one. I would like that, and I would I would laugh at that movie. Yeah. Okay. I would so, too. So who've you got in the in the lead in the lead character? You've got Adam. Who are you casting as Adam in this situation? Um, well, I've gone ahead and cast Ray first, okay. and I cast Ray as Ted Danson. Ted Danson. Right. So yeah. does he come in with the bins? Are you seeing him at the start taking the you bin out? You see of the him. Office? Yeah. He actually yeah. doesn't have any lines, but he will be nominated for an <laughs> yeah. award. Did we establish how old Adam was? I can't remember. Did we have a rough ballpark? I'm guessing late, late twenties, early thirties. Do you think? Oh right. yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, no, yeah, I think he is quite young. I think you're right. Quite handsome though. Quite handsome. Yeah. Well, quite yes. handsome. Well, we decided yeah. he was Scottish, didn't we? So he's like, we're, we're thinking like a. Uh, I'm just googling Scottish actors like a James McAvoy. A oh, Ewan James McAvoy. Ewan McGregor. Nice. Ewan, Ewan McGregor, McGregor would be. I, I can see you and McGregor. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so you and McGregor's shitting his pants. Um, no, David Tennant. David Tennant. David Tennant. No, David Tennant is his boss. David Tennant's his oh, boss. Or an investigative policeman. No, David Tennant reprises his character from Broadchurch right. in this comedy rump about shitting yourself. Okay. Okay. Are we putting Olivia <laughs> Coleman in it as well? Olivia <laughs> Coleman. <laughs> <laughs> Olivia okay. Coleman plays uh, so it's a crossover there's two yep. there's two stories like one of those movies that has lots of different stories in it so Olivia Coleman is actually going to be playing um, uh, the pussy of uh, oh Deb. of Deb yeah she's okay. playing Deb's puss that's a good yeah. role because what, <laughs> what was she going to do after the favourite she's got to push herself push herself you got to push yourself. You've always got to push yourself. So, okay, so that that sounds like a pretty good film. Are you saying it's a comedy, or are you saying it's you know there's 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 heightened drama in there it's as a well? It's a bit of a thriller. Yeah, it's a dramedy. It's a dramedy for sure. There's high tense situations. Mm. And Matt, what what are you saying about the other co-workers? Is there anyone else you want to cast in there as like oh. random character actors that you really like? Yeah, I always I always see Simon Pegg in a in an office environment. I always <laughs> yeah. just. I just, I just see, always can just see him in a tie. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe like a, a Josh Gad. There might be a Josh Gad. Oh, nice. Gad. 
in the Maybe Sigrid Thornton. <laughs> put Sigrid Thornton in there as well. The sea change vibe. Put that in there. Well, I think, I think that's an absolute hit that we have on our hands. Uh, thank you so much, guys, for coming on the podcast. Michelle Brazier, if people want to find you, how do they find you, Michelle Brazier? Um, you can just Google me and try to spell my name correctly. It is a bit of a challenge. Um, there are several uh, good reviews out in the world for Michelle Brazier. Uh, which oh, is good. God. I'm glad of that. But you can just Google me. You find me on the internet. It's easy to find. Watch that stand thing. You got oh, a podcast? Just Google me. Oh, yeah, I got a podcast. You can listen to Margaret Moves to Mars. It's an improvised narrative podcast written by um, Sam Lingham and I and improvised by uh, me and Mish Whitrip and uh, Vince Malazy, Tim Lancaster, Ben Russell. And I think that I said all the names. <laughs> it's so funny. It's so we, funny. Should, we should we should have a, a separate like there should just be when you do the edit there should yeah. be one extra name like and Greg Larson like, yeah. just, like, <laughs> just over the top. Yeah. And, and Mark Humphreys, what about yourself? Uh, on on uh, Twitter at Mark Humphreys. Very pleased to have my own name. Uh, had to wrestle it off someone who I'm, possibly died. I'm not sure, but oh. um, yeah. In the yeah. mysterious. <laughs> Very uh, mysterious. Yeah, so just 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 Twitter. That's that's where I'm relevant. Twitter. Yeah. I'm relevant so on relevant. Instagram. Please don't follow me on Twitter and expect things from me. People do that. I tweet very rarely. Why this? Huh? Why this? Well, <laughs> why be that? Why be like this? Well, thank you so much, Michelle Brazier, for joining me in isolation. Thank you. Rest in peace. Rest in peace, and thank you, Mark Humphreys, for the very first time. Thank you, Sam. What a thrill! <laughs> Thanks so much for doing that, guys. I'm going to stop recording right now.